Hi, I'm Chris from codereview.co.uk and in this video we're going to be looking at Doctrine Migrations Bundle. Now this is quite a straightforward topic to be honest. Um, it's one that you really should spend a few minutes of your time learning and the, the main purpose really for using migrations is that they provide a, a good way to keep your database schema in, in sync over time in a, in a pretty consistent and an easy way really. Um, how this is done inside Symfony is a little different to if you've ever used migrations in, say, Rails or uh, Django for Python. Um, essentially, what we do in Symfony is we create our entities and then we use Doctrine Migrations Bundle to look at the entities that we've created or um, made changes to, and then it looks at the existing database schema, so the tables and stuff that are in the database as it is, uh, and then it, it determines what's changed between your entities as they exist currently and your database schema as it ex exists currently. Then it creates this diff, um, so it creates the SQL statements effectively, which contain the, the additions and the, the drops um, to make your database stay in sync. So it sounds complicated, uh, but it's really not. Uh, it's not included by default, but if we go to the Symphony website, just look at the documentation, and then we go to bundles. There's the Doctrine Migrations bundle is one of the the um, well, it says it comes with it, but it doesn't. Maybe if you install the standard version, but the the version that you install through the website doesn't come with Doctrine Migrations. So what you do is you just grab these two, stick them in your Composer JSON, as I've already done. Um, my way of doing that is just leaving a little separator there so that I can see what came with Symfony and then the, the bundles that I've added uh, and then we run the composer update I've already done that um, because you know it takes a little bit of time not not too long honestly because these are relatively small files and then in the vendor doctrine directory you get the doctrine migrations bundle and you also get the migrations folder so that's basically where the implementation lives after that if we go back to the docs, we'll scroll down a little bit. We need to make sure that we register this with our app kernel. So just copy that out. Flipping heck, can't do it. And then we we'll go to our app, app kernel. And again, a little convention that I stick to, which is the Symphony standard bundles, then a space, then the third party bundles that I'm using, then a space, then my bundle. So that's the bundle that we're working with, the code review, learn to migrate bundle. And that's just been generated uh, standard. There's nothing, nothing out of the ordinary going in, on in there. So next thing, and I think last thing that we need to do in terms of config is just take a copy of this and paste this into our app. Um, sorry, our config. So config, config YAML. And then under Doctrine, actually under it, not inside it, so not as a property of Doctrine. Um, we paste this in leave it basically alone that's how I usually do it so you've got directory name it's going to create a folder called doctrine migrations inside here so I'm going to actually go ahead and manually do that there's a reason for that if I don't do that um, when I try and download that from the FTP which is how I work it's going to have a little bit of a paddy and try and download everything inside my cache directory as well which takes ages so I don't want to do that then Namespace, uh, I just leave it as application slash migrations. Table name, that's what it's going to put into your database. So the table that it's going to store our migration version numbers in, uh, the, the versions that have been applied, it's going to store that in the migration underscore versions table. And lastly, name. Uh, so I never really touch that. And uh, I can't really find any documentation on, on what that does, to be honest. But um, yeah, so I just leave it alone. And yeah, I think we're good to go. So got to, oh, last thing, you've got to make sure that you've got a database. Uh, I'm set up, very insecure, root, null, all good. Uh, but I've got a database that's there, but there's no database created on there. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to my console. I'm going to do php app console doctrine generate, oh, doctrine database create. Right, so we've got our empty database. And then if we do, let's just do doctrine migrations. Then we get our list of commands and we can do doctrine database, uh, sorry, doctrine migration status. We can see here that we have um, 
basically nothing but what you will see here is a new migration um, as and when we create our first entity so we're going to add our first entity in here and we're going to use the command line to do that so we're going to do doctrine generate entity and then we want to put it into code review I love this new autocomplete thing they've got going on as well um, if I could use it properly let's just put that in and we're just going to create a sprocket I'm going to create a sprocket and a widget but we're just going to start off with a sprocket um, accept annotations okay so it's created as an ID by default and um, we want to put in a name which is going to be a string 255 whatever and then we're going to do a price and that's going to be a decimal and that's pretty much it we don't need a repository for this example confirm generation cool little side note here one of the things I do is work via an FTP so I keep a VMware instance running locally with Linux running on it and sometimes PHP storm gets itself in a little bit of a hissy fit and it can't understand that command line generated stuff um, has been created on the server so the way to get, go on this is this remote host tab at the side click refresh and then you should be able to see the entity folder otherwise it won't download and then you've got to command C or control C or whatever and paste it in so that's what I've just done there so now we've got this entity that's been created for us and for the sake of this example actually I'm just going to delete all of the getters and the setters because I don't need them and it's just adding a little bit extra confusion the other thing I don't like about this is even though it's a doctrine out of the box doctrine thing it creates everything private which um, is against best practice as far as I'm aware for doctrine with Symfony or doctrine in general is a bit of a strange one that the the tool out of the box would do that so swap everything over to protected and then as we've got that we just check all these columns over we're all good we could even remove these var things as well but not going to in this case it's going to clear that off and then do a migration status we should see currently ah, we don't see anything why not Let's think, why don't we see anything? PHP Doctrine Migration Status. Oh, we've not done our diff. So, we can see that it's created off this uh, this strange looking file called version and then a timestamp. So, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. Not my favourite um, way of dealing with stuff, honestly, these timestamps. But, this is what's in that. So, there's no easy real real easy way of, of displaying this I guess but what it's what it's basically saying is if we were to create the sequel from scratch uh, this is the the sequel that it would create that we'd need to type in to to get that entity as a representation in our database so create a table sprocket create a column with ID etc etc and then also so that's the up uh, that's like the positive direction so that's the stuff that we want to add that's uh, the good stuff and then should this all go completely wrong completely pear-shaped whatever we need to figure out how to get back to the state that we were in before we run this this specific migration so to do that we would run the drop table command in this case so that's the most straightforward way of removing the change that we've just added and then so we just drop table sprocket and now that we've got that migration we can go back here and do a status and we can see now that we've got this one new migration so the way that we actually migrate to that is doctrine oh, we, if we do latest as well so we can get the version so that's that weird timestamp minus the the version string um, from the file but we need that to be able to go up so if we do doctrine migrations we can see all the commands and uh, of course I'm only doing that because I've forgotten the one that I'm supposed to type in but we can do um, migrations migrate and then paste the one in and then we get a warning error now this is it's an interesting warning this because what it's saying is um, it could result in schema changes and data lost well yeah it could and actually there's there is a very valid point um, where we could lose some data and that is if we have tables that are not inside our um, migrations but I'll cover that um, in a different video so we're just going to say yes and then that's going to run the SQL against our database so if we go across to our database now what we can see command R let's try, no, that's not going to do it uh, database, refresh tables so we get these migration versions that I, I talked about and that's got the name of the version that we've just run 
uh, remember this table stores migrations that have been applied not necessarily all the migrations that are available and then we've got this sprocket table so it's an empty table but it exists so we're going to add another entity and do another migration to show you this uh, as it as it would be used in the real world Okay, so I've been through the entity generator and generated a widget and this time we're going to create a one-to-many relationship. So we're going to go with, uh, as it is at the moment, this this has not been added to the database in any way. So there's no there's no diff been run against this, but we're going to do a, a relationship. So we're going to say that this widget belongs to a sprocket. So we're going to say sprocket and we're going to do a relationship and we're going to say ORM and then in this case we're going to do many to one many to one and we want to go with a target entity of sprocket and our what's the next one inversed by is widget i think widgets inverse by widgets you'll have to bear with me i do this from notes honestly i'm terrible at remembering the uh the syntax for this stuff ORM uh, again and then we want to do join column join column and we want to give this a name of sprocket ID and we want to give this a referenced column name of ID and you could probably remember you could probably see why I can never remember these ones I just have a cheat sheet um, you may have seen it on my blog um, which I just always copy and paste from honestly it's probably why I can never remember it and then we go to sprocket and we want to put in this one's a little bit easier protected widgets and this one is a one to many RM one to many and this one has a target entity and that would be a widget oh. and it will also have a mapped by and that will be a sprocket okay so let's go and do the migrations for that so we do p oh, let's just let's just do it this way migrations diff and that's going to create this this sort of the schema uh, difference so let's just download that and we can see that we've got this create a table and then alter the table to add this foreign key and so on and this is basically as you would do it whether you were doing it you know using a tool an IDE um, not an IDE as such but a database utility or not um, this is how you would do it but this is in a much more structured fashion so we can see if we do migration status we should have a migration to run now let's just go with the Oh, we'll need to check what the latest one is. Oh, we can actually just pull it from the doctrine migrations migrate and then grab this one like so. Paste that in. Yes. And then if we go to our database now and do a command R. Yeah, for some reason it never. I, I'm not a massive fan of this SQL. Um, what's it called? SQL. SQL Pro. I actually prefer the one that I had when I used to use Windows, which was um, our SQL YOG, SQL YOG. It's much, much better, but hey ho. Anyway, so now we've got a working database, and we can see in here if we add a sprocket, and you can see that we've applied two migrations. Now, I can what I can do to show you something there is if we do migrations, and then we can do a generate. So this will generate an empty migration file not that one we want to go migrations download this and we have this empty migration file but if we actually look in our database look at the migration versions you can see that it's only got the two that are applied uh, the two that have been applied rather than the three that exist so we've got the sprocket we're just going to add one in so we're just going to say sprocket one and a price of 20, uh, 30 whatever 20 god it always drives me insane that when people are doing that in videos and they, they go back and correct it like it matters in any way. Anyway, and then this has got an idea of one because it's related to the first sprocket and blah, whatever. And then just to prove that this is accurate, if we try and assign it to sprocket two that doesn't exist and 
yeah so we get it's good in that you know we definitely know that that migration is a valid migration so that's that's pretty much everything that you need to know with the exception of if we do migrations migrate and we want to go backwards so say we wanted to go back to completely empty database we would always choose migrate to zero so that's version zero that's the first thing that, that exists and you can see that it's just gone rolled back to two so it just reverts back in time as so if you go forwards in time it's going to apply them in pro in the right order and if you go backwards in time it applies them sort of in reverse and uh, to the point where it drops everything uh, in this case so we can just check in our database that that's worked and we can see no migrations have been applied but the database hasn't been dropped and um, we could just say um, we only want to go to the point where we had sprockets so we're going to go to migrate to version the first one and that's just created the first one again we can go back to zero and then we could whoops we could then just go completely on to the last one where we've got everything so it sort of skips ahead so any new developers coming onto the project or whatever they can just run this be bang up to date straight away and well it would be if SQL Pro would uh, play ball yeah silly it, it will it is working it's just for some reason it takes a while for it to come through I, I don't know why like I said I'm not a massive fan of this program um, it's not gonna do it is it it's making me look silly nice silly thing so there we go I've just had to, I had to change the database come back in stupid anyway it's working and that's basically migrations in a nutshell so um, in the next video I'm going to show you how to use migrations on an existing project where stuff like the sprocket and the widget already exists and you've got to sort of implement migrations into that